the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. The Pharisees at this point in Christ's ministry had become more encouraged to challenge Christ and to challenge him to his face, even if the people were watching and paying attention. The people themselves loved Christ because he had, he had a hand with them in what they were doing and was hands-on with their healing, with their teaching, with their encouragement. He was with the people. And sometimes the Pharisees acted above the people so that they saw the Pharisees from far away and they got their blessings. But they didn't feel a true connection with the Pharisees most of the time. And so the people were protective of Christ. But as time went on, the Pharisees thought to challenge Christ's teachings and challenge Christ's works so that they could win back the people. What better way, although low, to equate the Lord's casting out of a demon to him being teammates with Beelzebub himself, instead of saying the Lord was holy and therefore able to cast out demons, they tried to incite the people by mentioning that Christ casts out demons by Beelzebub, the leader of the demons or the king of the demons. So that what the people saw was something good happening and the Pharisees tried to change it to something bad happening. Or what the people saw that Christ was doing something promising or helpful or positive and the Pharisees twisted it to make it seem like he was doing something evil or distracting or tricking the people. So it was a very <clears throat> personal attack, and it was a very vicious attack against Christ's works. And he answered them, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. But there was one thing that Christ said that kind of struck me as I was rereading it. And he said, if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? By whom do your sons cast them out? The idea being that currently at the time and what was going to come was that the sons of Christ and the daughters of Christ would continue to cast out demons from generation to generation to generation. If he cast out demons by Beelzebub and I'm not connected to you, well, your sons, the ones that will take on the faith because of me, are going to cast out demons also. Are you going to say that your flesh and blood also is, is planning to do something bad with Beelzebub, to join him in his kingdom so that you could also cast out demons like me? So he brought it in a personal way back to them. And he reminds us that we also have this power. There's two different ways of casting out demons. There's the show way where we see people actually casting out demons and it's dramatic and it's scary and it's sometimes hard to watch. Most of the time, I don't judge about what's happening there, but what I do judge is that that's not the practical way. If someone, I remember someone coming up to me and saying like, I feel like this person has like, a demon, could you come and do something? And I said, no, that's, I'm kind of scared to do stuff like that. I don't, that's not mine. That's like a very dramatic and extreme thing that we see on YouTube or on videos, and we believe in it, raised our faith. And, but I'd like to think in more practical terms. Satan isn't coming <clears throat> to scare us in a direct way. When the lights are off in our houses and we walk around, we're sometimes afraid, but no one's having Satan appear to them to scare them. The reason that doesn't happen is because if that happened, then we would gain all the faith and we wouldn't be afraid anymore. Uh, Satan comes in an indirect way these days now. There's not anybody here in church screaming or shouting out. There's 
but that doesn't necessarily mean that Satan isn't battling us or isn't involved in our lives. The more practical way that we see Satan in our daily uh, times with one another is when we see anger or when we see fighting or when we see jealousy or when we speak about one another or when we fight or when we argue. Those are the times that Satan is present. And the trick is, when we see someone casting out a demon, we know who the team is. We know that this is Satan inside this person, and we know this is the holy man over here. And we understand and we know who's who. And we would never go up to the person that's demon-possessed and say, I understand what you're saying, I, I know how you feel. Because we realize, and there's a clear distinction between good and evil. Sometimes, however, in practicality, in our practical lives, there is not that distinction anymore. And sometimes we get caught up in the wrong side. So the idea being, if I'm a father and I have two sons and they're fighting, I might join one of the sons in fighting against my other son as a way of practicality of saying someone's right and someone's wrong. And I will miss the fact that Satan, what he's doing is inciting my family against itself. And I lose the factor of whose team is whose. The same thing might happen with an argument with my wife, Messanen. If me and my wife are fighting, I might find that my decision is the right one and my wife's decision is the wrong one. Most of the time I do find that. But that's not necessarily true. Sometimes we pick the wrong sides. Any fight is against Christ. Any argument is against Christ. Any anger is against Christ. We have no right to anger, even if we're right. We have no right to make someone feel down or worse, even if we're positive that what we're saying is true. We have no right to go to sleep angry at our spouses or at our friends or at our brothers or at our parents, even if we think what we're saying is right. What happens there is that the devil has tricked us into thinking that I'm on the right side. I'm the powerful priest, our, our father, the saintly father, Amba Abraham, Amba Abraham here, the saint of the church. There is a story about him casting out demons, all the people in the church singing Kiri Eleison until the demon was finally cast out. No one in that church had any problem knowing who was the right one and who was the wrong one. No one went to the girl that was demon-possessed or the man that was demon-possessed and said, I understand how you feel now, and I'm going to fight Amba Brahm against you. No one would ever do that. They knew who was right. We have to be careful in our practical matters fighting Satan. Because Satan doesn't come to us in an angry way with shouting and cursing. And he says, I know who you are and I know where you've been and all that kind of stuff. He doesn't do that. He comes in a secretive way. He comes in a conspiratorial way, a tricky way. He tricks us into joining him. And so we have to be able to understand where the trick is coming from and how to defeat it. And so the first way to do that is to pray. We pray and we ask the Lord to help us to understand the conspiracies of the adversary, to help us understand when we're being tricked, to help us see clearly, to help us know the difference between right and wrong, even when it's not obvious. This prayer we say every time we pray. It's a prayer of repentance also, because you say, Lord, if I was tricked before, or if I didn't know what I was doing was wrong, let me understand it and let me know it. After we pray this prayer, there is going to be moments where it will be obvious that you've been wrong before. And this is the time to fix it. And so if I, like I said, if I have a fight with my spouse or my wife, and she says something wrong to me, or she says something about me that I don't agree with, I might defend myself in a very strong way because I feel like it's my opportunity to defend myself. I can't just let her speak about me like that. And then instead of taking it how it should be taken and improving myself, like if, if you know, this doesn't happen, but if my wife says, like, 
you're a mess. You make big messes and you don't clean them up. And I feel like I've been working all day. I don't have to clean up when I come home. It's your job. Why do I have to clean up? So I can take it in a negative way and say, I'm not going to do that. Or I can take it in a positive way and say, what's the trick here? Is the devil trying to entice me into a fight with someone that I care about and that I love? Maybe perhaps I am messy and maybe perhaps I do make big messes and maybe perhaps it's not fair that she has to do all this work and maybe I can take five minutes and clean it up myself. If we're aware of the adversary's tricks, we can come to that without a fight happening. And the idea is to pray about it beforehand and ask God, open to me, open my eyes for me so that I can know and see what I'm doing and if what I'm doing is wrong. I know this seems like such like an easy thing or something that's like so simple and obvious, but it's not obvious. We get tricked often. Another scenario is a stranger coming up to us and saying something negative to us or bad to us or fighting with us. This might have happened a few times in your lives. And so we see it as an opportunity to defend ourselves again, to shout or to fight or to do something bad. And oftentimes we have the cross around our necks as we're doing this thing. And what Satan will do is he'll make sure the person that we're fighting with sees the cross around our necks so that the idea is, even though we're defending ourselves, we think that we're right, people will look at us and say, you're a Christian, but you fight, or you scream, or you curse, or you say things that are wrong. Oftentimes, especially in this country, we'll feel like when we go to a store or a restaurant or whatever, that people are trying to trick us or steal our money or trying to do something to us, and we'll defend ourselves and fight and scream and shout. What happens is, is that the devil is clear in front of us and we don't see him. And we're not fighting him anymore, but we're giving in to him. We're giving in to the world. The second way, like I said, to fight this is to be more self-aware. So you've prayed now about being self-aware. Let the Lord open your eyes, test me, try my heart, help me to understand what I'm doing and what I'm not doing, what's good and what's bad. And now you have a chance to use this test. And the test comes and you fail it the first time. Someone, your brother comes and you feel like he's taking something from you. So you shout at him and you curse at him and you kick him out of your house. What now could I do? I've let the devil come in and take away my mind and my heart and what I know. Is there a solution to this problem? The next thing that you can do is even if you fail at this, you can fix it. And you can fix it by humbleness or repentance. If you humble yourself, even in situations where you feel like you are right, you can fix any problem that you've put yourself into. It is very hard to do. But it's also very hard to cast out demons. If you've ever seen like someone trying to cast out a demon, it doesn't take three seconds. They go for hours and hours and hours. And no one says, oh, this priest doesn't know what he's doing because he took three hours to cast out a de demon. They say, wow, this priest is a holy man because he's casting out a demon. Sometimes it's hard for us to do things to cast out Satan. And I don't mean to cast out someone that has Satan in them. I mean to cast out Satan out of our own hearts when we're upset with someone and we don't want to forgive them or we don't want to humble ourselves to agree with them or we don't want to humble ourselves to go apologize to them. It's hard. No one said it's easy. But casting out demons is hard. So again, you go back to prayer and you say, Lord, my heart is closed and it's like a stone. I don't know what to do. Help me to open it. What can I do? I don't see where I've been wrong. I don't see how apologizing to my brother is going to help me. It's going to make me look weak. He's going to trick me again. He doesn't deserve my apology. He doesn't deserve that I speak to him ever again. It's hard. But the teaching is always the same. You can't go to sleep angry at your wife or your brother or your father or your son or your daughter. You can't. Finally, understanding and seeing Satan in our lives and knowing his tricks can help us to overcome him, but only through Christ himself. When Christ said, by whom do your sons cast him out, he meant it because he gave them the power to cast out serpents and scorpions, to trample on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. <coughs> he gave the apostles that power. 
and the apostles through the Holy Spirit gave it to us too. We sometimes get confused with what we're supposed to do with it. But the key is a kind heart, a kind word, a kind smile, and forgiveness are all we can do. And we can cast out Satan also by humility and humbleness, by forgiveness, by putting ourselves down. We can also cast him out. It takes practice. Like I said, sometimes we will fail at it. But if you failed at it recently, and there's something that's reminded you now of a moment where you failed at casting out Satan in a situation with your family or your friends or a stranger or anybody, the idea of church and the idea of our gathering together and our idea of taking from the Eucharist is that we can fix and renew and start over so that if you're sitting here and there's something stopping you from forgiving or loving or accepting, you can fix it by Christ himself and you can defeat the conspiracies of the adversary. You could shut the gates of Hades as we pray. You can do these things now if you make a conscious decision that I will no longer be held captive by Satan anymore. I will no longer be away from Christ my Savior. I will no longer consider myself right, even though I may be wrong. There is a chance, there is still an opportunity for you to make amends with Christ. So I urge you all, I'm not saying we all have it, but some of us do. If there are people in this church or anywhere that have something against someone else for any reason or have not spoken to someone that they should be loving for any reason, today is the time to fix it. Today is the time to cast out that demon, to not be tricked by Satan anymore. Demons don't just appear and scare us. Demons are among us all the time. Sometimes they're in our own hearts. Anytime we can't forgive, anytime we can't pray, anytime we can't take communion, anytime we don't feel close to God, if something is stopping us, we can remove it, we can take it out. Let's all pray together during this liturgy that any conspiracies of the adversary be shown, any deep hidden agendas be clear so that we can cast them out and fix them. We can be considered sons and daughters of Christ and cast out demons by Christ in his name. Let's pray together and stand and pray as one during this liturgy so that if there are any things that are hidden, they can be revealed and fixed. And glory be to God forever.